Hey, spark lighter again. Um, so I did end up getting these bearings off. Um, that guillotine style press I had at work didn't work. So what I ended up with was grinding some channels with a cutter on both sides. Being really careful with the case and making sure I'm not, you know, divoting my race or anything. Um, use a chisel down in each one of those divots until I got some sort of a crack on this side I was able to get like just a hairline crack in there and as soon as the hairline crack popped I was able to pull it off by hand um, tap it a little bit kind of at as it's as it sits on there at like an upward angle with the chisel on the far side of that race seat and it just walked it right off I was able to get that on both sides. Haven't started repressing yet. I have to use uh, the hydraulic press at work. Um, there's the kit and the gears. <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself and started trying to pull out the axle bearings before I realized that, duh, they don't put those in that kit. <laughs> so. What I ended up having to do is I'm going to have to get an axle bearing puller from O'Reilly or whoever rent it and pull that race and repress one bearing. Both the bearings on the axles look really good. I just, I thought they came in the kit so I thought I'd replace them anyways but I'll end up just replacing this one side. It's about 30 bucks for an axle bearing. I guess it's not bad but when you're on a budget, <laughs> kind of stick to doing the minimum necessary. Um, I also started to get the races put in. I got the new races put in for both the pinion bearings. The top one is where I started and what I ended up doing here for anybody who doesn't know how to do them yet, which <laughs> I didn't, I just kinda guessed my way through it. I put the new race in first so major it set evenly. I set the case up so I could get um, a plumb reading with a level sideways and then again this way so I knew it was perfectly plumb. And then I set the old race with the thick side of the flange down on top of the new race. And I used a socket and I tapped around it kind of in a circular motion a little at a time till I could feel it started and then after I got it you know 10 12 taps I would take a level and level this this way and this way so that I made sure I was doing it plumb and if I was off plumb at all this side ended up being high for me I would tap here and get that a little down and then I'll re-level it and once I was level again I'd start the whole process over so really it only took about 20 minutes to get that one in straight and seated. Um, important note, the reason that you want the thick side of this flange down is because it's gonna partially press into that seat in order to get that new race fully seated. So once it's, full, once it's started pressing into that seat, you can take a little pry bar and get under the lip of the old bearing. Put something down here to make sure you don't scar it too much because you're uh, pinion seal has to sit there and then just a little bump and it would pop right out the second one wasn't so easy um, it took me a while to kind of figure out how to get that done but what I ended up doing is using the old pinion and bearing set the new race in just you know set it on there and then you put the old pinion in put the old pinion bearing on the back side as well and I used an impact wrench and just pulled it right in. Uh, that was no problem at all. So both races for the pinion are in. I haven't got much further because I'm a little leery of starting the whole shim process for that, uh, not the backlash, but for the backspacing on the pinion. Um, this is a crushed sleeve application but there's also shims involved so I kinda wanna do some more research and see if I can get some more information on that before I start I'm worried 
that I'm going to get just so far into it and realize, well, the bearing's pressed on to the pinion now, and there's not enough shims. I don't know how to get that off of the pinion without ruining that bearing, which is brand new. Um, I think that's about it. If anybody has any good procedurals for getting that bearing back off, say that I get it on there and I need more shims, or if you can give me an idea of how the crush sleeve works in a better fashion, the tutorials I found online are pretty lame and they gloss over the little details that I kind of would like to have before I started. I don't want to ruin anything else, like I ruined, <laughs> ruined that bearing for no reason. Um, thanks for any help in advance, and we'll see you guys later.